Question 18 is to use tests for parallelogram to determine whether the quadrilaterals are parallelogram or not. Here we have to know a few basic things of parallelogram. As the name suggests, parallelogram means, say for example, if you have opposite sides parallel, opposite sides equal, th these are few criterias and opposite angles are equal. So these are few things. Now looking at this, we know this these two sides are parallel. And they have told these two are congruent as well. Now, are they then parallelogram? So if it's parallel, see now this side and this side is parallel and congruent, then opposite two sides will be equal and they will also be parallel no matter what. Whenever you connect these two ends, right? Doesn't matter how they are spaced. Even imagine now they are spaced like this and like this. If these both are parallel and congruent, when you join these two sides, they will be equal and parallel also so that is okay th there is a theorem as well so because a pair of its opposite side is parallel and congruent it's denoted by theorem which I have forgotten already so this theorem uh, particularly says yes it is a parallelogram because this passes the test now what about this this is also yes it's a parallelogram because the opposite angles are congruent so by 7.10 theorem the quadrilateral is uh, parallelogram because both the pair of opposite angles are congruent. Now here when you're writing, you must write yes, they, it is a parallelogram because both the opposite pair of opposite angles are congruent. Here you must tell what is happening. Here you don't need to mention theorem this and this, but this theorem is saying, see what this theorem says is this particular thing. That's it. And now same way over here. Now what about this one? No, uh, there's no enough information to say this is a parallelogram. Okay, no one of the tests of parallel, uh, no one of the tests of parallelogram are fulfilled because yes, these two sides are parallel. So what exactly? This may not be parallel. These may not be equal. So there are so many things. This is not equal. So you know we can't just tell anything. Whereas this one, both the opposite sides are parallelogram. Then yes, it is a parallelogram because sorry, over here it is. Uh, congruent right yeah even if it was parallel also yes now both the opposite sides are congruent so yes it's a parallelogram this is one of the theorem that states if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent then it's a parallelogram and over here there are a few more over here the diagonals are bisected so yes this is a parallelogram as well because the diagonals are bisecting each other and now what about the sixth one there is no enough information because this is parallel yes these opposite two sides now these are congruent, but if the same sides were parallel and congruent, then it's there is a theorem. But over here, no, we don't have a theorem that says any two, uh, any one pair is parallel and the other side is congruent. It's a parallelogram. No, it might be if these were parallel, yes, but we don't have enough information. Okay, so we cannot tell this is exactly a parallelogram. And now we have some real world problems here. Uh, in an organization, the space, the space between the hinges and tray of collapsible tray organizer appears to be a parallelogram. This one over here given. Find the values of X and Y so that the tray hinges of the organizers, organizer forms a parallelogram. Now basically, the inner part, see this one, this is a parallelogram. It looks like a parallelogram as well and they are given the angles. They are telling we need to Arrange this such that it's a parallelogram. That means the opposite angles are equal. So just equate them. This is 3x plus minus 4. That must be equal to 2x plus 16. Solve this for x. Take uh, 2x to the other side. It will be minus 2x equals 16 plus 4. And it will be x equals 20. x value is 20. Now we need to find y. Equate these both. It is 4y minus 56 equals 2y plus 34. Take 2y to the other side, it will be 4y minus 2y equals 34 plus 56. Here, 50, 80, 90 will be the answer, and over here it's 2y. So divide both the sides by 2, you will get 45. So this is the answer. So this is it. Um, x is 20, y is 45 very simple now same concept can be applied over here they are asking you x and y they have just told the quadrilateral shown as a parallelogram we need to find x and y so the same concept it's just that we have to equate the opposite sides now in the previous one it was angles now it's sides 
equate 2y plus 3 equals 4y minus 7 and 8x minus 3 equals 6x plus 1. Over here it's done over here. x will be 2 and y is 5. Same way just like what we have done a while ago. Now what about this one? We need to find the angles of x and y. We know that in a parallelogram the diagonals bisect. So what happens is I'll write the equation. Look at this line. This particular line must be equal to this particular line. The same with this, sorry, this line. I hope you understand my drawings of that are very bad, but this line and this line are equal over here. And this and this is equal. So we have to just equate it 3y minus 5 equals 2y plus 18. Um, just equate it and solve it now. It will be 3y minus 2y equals 18 plus 5. The answer is 23 here. Y equals 23. What about this x? It is minus 4x minus 2 equals minus 3x plus 4. So take the uh, 4x to the other side because this is smaller. It's negative 4 which is smaller than negative 3. So take it to the other side and this 4 to the other side. Minus 2 minus 4 equals minus 3x plus 4x. The answer is minus 6 equals x. So these are the answers. x is negative 6 and y is 23. That's it. Because the diagonals bisect each other. That is very important to mention over here. It's very uh, helpful if you mention this. Even if you write this, it's enough. But if you mention this statements, it's more than, uh, it's well and good. Now then, over here, they have told again it's a parallelogram. So just equate the opposite sides. It's pretty straightforward. Equate them and solve it up. Here they worked out problem is there, the each detailed solution. This is very important. Don't skip steps. Try to mention all these steps and solve. Here then, we have to, the example 3, that's the problem 11. Determine whether ABCD is a parallelogram. Justify your answer. Okay. How can we determine this is a parallelogram? First thing, it looks, you know, it looks congruent, but we need to know whether they are parallel. So what you can do is you can just find the slopes over here and then find the distance. Now, first of all, there are many ways to solve this problem. One way is now if you just find the slope of this and this and then find the distance, see over here x and y, what is the x, y coordinate? Minus 2 and positive 3, right? If you find, have the xy coordinate, you can easily find the distance from year to year also. This is how much? Z x is minus 3 and 0. You can find distance, you can find slope over here. Same thing do over here. Class. Otherwise, you can find all the slopes in all the four sides and then also you can apply. Let's see what they have done over here. They have find, found the slope. And then they have found the, okay, they have just found the slopes of all the uh, sides. That's also fine. But now, uh, yeah, because slope formula is easy to remember and it makes sense. It's easy to apply because you have to know the coordinates over here of all the points. Just apply the slope formula from year to year. And that's fine. Now, I will tell you one more thing. This is, this method is important. It's just the same thing what I'll be doing as well. Just substitute it and do it. The slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. All you need to do over here is what is y2? That is choose any two points. I will choose d and a. So over here it is minus 2 comma 3. Here it is minus 3 comma 0. x1 y1 x2 y2. So you can just substitute. Now in this case they have taken it like this x2 y2 x1 y1 and even if you take it like what I had written you will get the same answer no worries in that. So 3 minus 0 or if you do 0 minus 3 and divide it by the other, uh, other two terms it will be the same answer. Your answer will be 3 no matter what. Now remember you will find the slope of this compare it with this not the other lines. A, D and B, C, the opposite side must be parallel, okay? Now, the another way is look over here, 1 X point and 3 Y point. So, D, Y by D, X. The difference in Y is 3, X is 1, so it's 3. What about this? 1, 1, 2, 3. So, D, Y by D, X. This is for A, D, line A, D. This is for B, C. It's 3 by 1, that is also 3. This is also one way to check your answer. 
If you just can't remember anything to write, write this at least. You will get the marks over here. And then what else over here? The slope of AB. How do you do that? So you know the coordinates. We have just seen the coordinates a while ago. So you can do the same thing with coordinates. But now I'll do it, uh, tell you the shortcut. Here x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. dy by dx. x is 5. And this y is minus 1 downwards. So it should be negative 1 by 5. Over here, minus 1 dy by dx. So this is for the line DC. And this is for the, was for the line AB. Now here, dy is negative 1. What is x? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the answer. Yes, the slopes are same. So therefore, we can say that they are parallel. If at all the slopes were not uh, sorry, the slopes were not same, then it's not parallel, then it's not a parallelogram. Here, all the four sides are parallel and hence ABCD is a parallelogram by definition. Here, now they have just given you the XY. There's no graph. Here, you just have to apply the formula. Oh, the graph is not given, I believe. See, since they have given this, you can plot the graph if you want. But otherwise, you can just use X1, Y1 and start solving. Now, here, there is an important thing you ought to notice. You need to draw a graph. Why? Because what happens is you might take PQ, line PQ, okay? And then don't compare it with QS. So the important thing is if you're directly doing over here without the graph, then you must solve for all the slope, line slope. PQ, QS, SY, and PY. All the slopes, two must match to each other. Now here, we must find all these slopes and match. If you did this diagram, then you know PQ and YS must match or SY. So I should just match these both and then these both because they are opposite sides. So that's the thing. Over here, you just do this uh, you know, direct substitution. You'll get the answer 0. And these two lines are having slope 0 and 0. Yes, QS and PY, fine. What about the other two lines? Here you can see 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1. Yes, they are parallel because they are having the same slope. So all the sides are having same slope. It's a parallelogram. Please do it for the other problems as well. Please, uh, now over here, they have used distance formula. It's fine. You can use distance formula or the slope formula. It's fine. But in the exam, they, they, if they have mentioned, they're specified, see, use distance and slope formulas. Even over here, just, okay, over here there was only slope formula. Here they have told distance and slope. Even if you just do the distance or if you just do the slope, it will be correct answer. It's fine. You technically are doing it correctly. So you're supposed to get full marks itself. But over here, if you remember the distance formula, it's D equals square root of X to minus X1 the whole square plus Y to minus Y1 the whole square. And then you solve it up. Here, opposite side, ST and ZT. Are they having equal side? Yes. Now, one more thing is find the slope for those same points, not the other point. You used what? SR and QT, sorry, ZT. Here, find the slope, uh, uh, distance done, slope of the same two lines because only if the lines are congruent and having same slope, that means they are parallel, then only it's a parallelogram. If you find this distance over here of SR and QT, sorry, ZT, and find the slo slopes of other two lines, it's no use. You're not uh, finding it's a parallelogram or no. Now, we here, yes, since uh, the opposite sides are having one of the opposite sides, see, one pair of opposite sides are congruent because we found the equal distance over here and they are having same slope. This, this is a parallelogram because it's parallel and are congruent. Same thing here. Now here they are doing midpoint formula. Midpoint formula of what? It's of diagonals. Midpoint formula is given by x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. It's very simple. Now midpoint can't be done to lines. Don't forget. It's not for the lines. We have seen in the previous problems, diagonals bisect each other. So find the midpoint. We got 0, 2 and over here 0, 1. Now can this be possible? If looking at this, it's not a parallelogram, but still, if it's a parallelogram, the midpoint of the diagonals must bisect each other. That means they'll join at the same point, the midpoint of both. These two lines are not at all accurate, which I've drawn. 
okay this must be extended but you know the length over here the midpoint for both will be touching each other it should be same now here it's not same look uh, see this is no because the midpoint does not uh, you know uh, intersect at the same point diagonals do not meet at the same point so no it's not parallelogram here again the slope formula that means just use all the slopes and here what happened when you just solve it up for the opposite sides this one x z and y z looking at it you can understand it's not at all a parallelogram sorry they have used for x y and z w what happened the slopes are different and looking at this also this is a undefined slope and this is having some slope negative slope so they are not same hence they are not parallelograms and that's the end of this particular uh, question. So make sure you remember a few formulas. That is the distance formula, the slope formula, the midpoint formula. And remember a few of the theorems which will prove parallelograms uh, true. So if you know these things, then this is very easy topic as well.